Hi everyone, I'm Donovan, Head Director of Training and Breeding at Canine Control. Here we are on the boardwalk of Long Beach, New York, that unfortunately is still recovering from Hurricane Sandy. I am a second generation dog trainer and breeder. I have been the owner of animal hospitals, boarding kennels, grooming shops, security dog companies, pet training and sitting businesses, as well as being a supplier of police, corrections, and SWAT team canines. I own the canine training equipment business and I'm a certified court expert witness in New York on dog related issues. I train detection dogs, therapy dogs, and service dogs. I have worked as a vocational instructor teaching many to become professional dog trainers. I can honestly say that I have 40 years experience in this field. My most passionate project, however, is the development of my own breed, the Donovan Pinscher, which we have nicknamed the American Super Dog. Follow us through our many ups and downs, including our latest project, Canine Control TV. Canine Control TV is going to bring you to the exciting, behind the scenes world of the professional dog trainer and breeder. You're going to meet the most fascinating New York City area personalities and their dogs. We're going to address every imaginable issue and question on the subject. Political correctness is not in my DNA. I'm going to show you how it is, shed light on many myths and false beliefs, and share some hilarious moments with you in the Canine Control Pro. Press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and buckle your seatbelt because we want you to be a part of our family. Just go get the dog. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Canine Control TV. I'm your host, Donovan. This week we're going to bring you a very exciting episode. We're going to be visiting the Shinnecock Nation Reservation, located on the south shore of Long Island, New York. We're going to meet Shinnecock's peaceful warrior, a seven-month-old South African Borable and his family, both extremely rare breeds. And away we go! It's time for the canine quiz. What is the largest African Borable on record internationally? A. 200 pounds B. 250 pounds C. 300 pounds or D. 350 pounds. Enter down below in the comment section and stay tuned. South African Barbal Canine Facts. Name. The name Barbal is derived from the Afrikaners Dutch word boar, which means farmer. Therefore, the exact translation of the name refers to farmer's dog. 2. Size. The average size for a Barbal is between 110 pounds and 150 pounds. Although many are quite larger and smaller sizes are considered a disqualifying fault. The average height is between 23 and 27 inches at the shoulder and again smaller sizes are disqualifying. 3. Coat. The African Barbal has a short thick coat that comes in various colors. The most common being fawn with or without black mask, red with or without black mask, and brindle. We have also seen them in blue, although blue eyes are a disqualifying fault. There are some other rare acceptable colors, such as piebald and Irish markings. 4. History The Barbal belongs to a family of dogs known as mastiffs, or less commonly as molassers. There is a measure of uncertainty to the exact makeup of the various breeds that went into creating the modern Borable. However, it is commonly believed that it is comprised mostly of indigenous South African dogs with the influence of French, Dutch, and British breeds such as the Old English Mastiff and Bull Mastiff. 5. Purpose The South African Borable is the only South African breed created expressly for the purpose of personal and home guardian. 6. Temperament. The South African Barbal is a generally more energetic variety of Mastiff, requiring commitment on the part of the owner regarding formal training and exercise. If given these outlets, they tend to excel in these areas. They are good-natured dogs who are safe with kids and family members. However, their protective nature makes them formidable guard dogs and protectors. This aspect of the dog's temperament needs to be taken into account when considering this breed for a family pet. All that's bigger ain't bold And all that's litter ain't old And all that's glitter ain't gold And all y'all can't roll, sorry Hi, this is Donovan from Canine Control We're out here in Southampton, Long Island 
home to many celebrities like Ralph Lauren, Billy Joel, and Alex Baldwin. But it's also home to the uh, Shinnecock Indian. This has been home to them long before this was the United States of America. In a moment, we're gonna go around the corner and meet Brian, he's a client of mine, and he has a very rare breed of dog called the South African Borable. Where do you see this dog? It is a monster. Brian built a sophisticated facility just for the dog to house the dog. I thought he was building a lion cage at a zoo. I still make fun of it to this day and call it the condo. This is gonna be an exciting and cool trip. Oh, I'm here with Green Jones and our man Brian. What's up everybody out there? We're out here at the uh, Shinnecock Reservation. This is Brian's awesome house and he's, he's got a whole uh, recording studio down here for his wife who's a very talented artist. Like like so we're down here checking out his studio and we're about to go outside and do some work with his South African Morable piece. And uh, what do you guys say hello to the Say hello to our audience. What's up, everybody hey. out there? All right. Welcome to my home. <laughs> and this is going to be a great trip. You guys are going to see something you probably never saw before. Okay, let's go check out the dog now. South African Borable Peace. All right. Come on. All right. Um, so here we are. Here we are at Peace's house with the family. I want everybody to introduce yourself. Say Bryce. Bryce. <laughs> Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, and that piece over there, how old is Peace now, Brian? Seven months. He's a South African Borable. The South African Borable is an extremely rare breed of dog. I mean, you never even heard of him before nope. you got in this Not guy. Right? I wanted you to let you know also that I bought you a new leash today because I remember that he, the long he, leash you had. He popped it. Yeah, he broke it. Uh, but look strong. at this facility, as a matter of fact. He's seven months. Oh, and la last time that you had him weigh, I had him to the vet. How much did he weigh? 120 pounds. 120 pounds at seven months. But look at this. He's got a state-of-the-art dog house here. He even has his own septic system. He's excited. Come on, buddy. Aww. Uh-oh. Good boy. Hey, hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. You didn't even want to talk to me. Right? First, uh -oh. we check if Brian's been doing his homework. At this point, we expect the dog to both sit and lay down on single auditory signals instantly, quickly, and willingly. Down. Okay. Now the South African Borbo is known as a guarding breed and you can see as somebody comes up from the rear here. These dogs, uh, most of these giant mastiff type breeds, which he obviously is, um, don't mature until they get about three years old. But at seven months and 120 pounds, you can just imagine what he's gonna be like because he's only about um, you know, halfway through his maturing process, even physically he's going to be significantly larger than he is, as hard as that is to believe. Mm -hmm. But, um, but he's very even tempered, very even tempered The next dog. exercise that Peace has to learn is the hey, heel exercise, heel. which more simply means that heel. the dog has to come to and follow Good at boy. the trainer's left side. We've been working on some of his fundamental commands here. Down. As we advance in the heel exercise, we're applying a very fundamental dog training principle of correction, which you see right there, which is a, an, a kind of annoying tug at the leash, and a reward when the dog comes to the left side of the trainer. Good boy. Once again, you see the annoying tug at the leash when the dog goes out of position, and then the food reward when the dog once again goes into the correct position. Here we are practicing the three fundamental parts of every command. A, the action part. I command the dog down, he has to lay down immediately. Then second, he has to abstain from getting up. So I circle around the dog, I step over the dog, and the dog can't get up during this part. And then the last part is the release part, which the dog gains a reward and knows is a signal it's the end of the exercise. Here we are teaching the dog the up command. This command is very useful. It could be used to teach a dog to jump into the back of your pickup truck, to jump over a fence, 
or to jump onto any object that okay. may be in the environment. Okay. Good boy. Oh, yeah. Good right. boy. Good boy. Here we're teaching Sit. the dog the confusing exercise of circling around behind the trainer to find the heel Yo. position on the left side. Good boy, yeah. Good boy. Boy, it's coming along. You yeah, have been yeah, working. You right. have been practicing with him. Mm -hmm. Good boy. I mean, when I look at him, every time I see him, Brian, this dog is just bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this rate, you know, he's got to get to be over 150 pounds at least. If not more, yeah. if he's 120 now, I mean, yeah. he's just turning into a gigantic. And when we came in, when we first came into the yard, I noticed that he is starting. Do you notice an increase like oh, in him barking yeah, at yeah. strangers and stuff Anybody like that? Anybody walks in here, he, he's letting it be known. Yeah, he's starting yeah, to sound yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, and he's still a baby, you know, so that's yeah. going to increase as he gets older. The kids may be occasionally intimidated by him, but it's only it's only good-natured actions on the part of the dog. You know what I'm saying? He's always happy and friendly yeah. about them. Yeah. If he ever, this dog, at this point, if he ever hurt anyone of you, it would strictly be because he's just trying to be friendly and happy about it, you know? Hey, easy, easy. easy. But, like, that kind of intimidates me a little bit. I'm not yeah. that comfortable with, like, putting my whole hand in his mouth. Many first-time owners of giant breeds have trouble conceiving of a 120-pound dog that has puppy behaviors. If this behavior does not change with training and maturity, it will be addressed directly at a later stage. Ready? I'm going to wipe the slobber off my hand so I can shake everybody's mm -hmm. hand and say thank goodbye you to you much. guys. I want you to enjoy. You. I want you to enjoy dinner. Everybody, yeah, thanks a lot for being on camera. Thanks a lot, Bryce. Give me five. Give me five, Bryce. Oh. Thanks a lot, Bryce. Oh. Thanks, peace. Give me kids. Oh. And thanks, everybody, for watching Canine Control. Unlike human beings, who sweat through every skin pore in their body, the dog can only release heat and sweat through its mouth. So if you're considering getting a Mastiff breed, remember, when it's hot, they drool a lot. The answer is D. Holy cow, 350 pounds. Welcome to our medical segment on Canine Control TV. Today, we are going to discuss vulnerable health issues. First on the list of concerns is canine hip dysplasia. Canine hip dysplasia is an abnormal formation of the hip joint socket. This abnormality causes a space to exist between the ball and the socket of the hip joint. This space eventually becomes arthritic and can become quite painful in serious cases. Second on the list is elbow dysplasia, a similar misformation of the joint, only this time affecting the dog's elbows. The third concern is vaginal hyperplasia, commonly referred to as vaginal prolapse. Prolapse is basically when during the heat cycle, the female's vagina swelling protrudes beyond the vulva. This causes a temporary but unattractive bulbous and mucus covered protrusions extending from the female's vagina. This area must be cleaned often during this time to prevent any sort of infection. It should be noted that Borable Club does not consider this to be a disqualifying fall. Lastly, we have ectropion, more commonly referred to as cherry eye. In this case, the eyelid rolls outward, causing a bright red fleshy mass in the eye. This condition often requires surgical correction. In conclusion, we would like to point out that all of these things have a genetic component. So it is best to deal with reputable and dedicated breeders whenever purchasing any purebred dog. Thanks again for watching Canine Control TV. And don't forget to press that like button. Hi everybody, and thanks for watching Canine Control TV. 
I'd also like to say a word here about animal rescue. I'd like to thank the countless animal shelters, humane societies, and private citizens who have fostered and helped to adopt out the millions of animals that remain in our shelters today that have no permanent homes. And I'd like to take this moment also to encourage you to please consider adoption as an option for your new pet. And don't forget to subscribe to our show at youtube.com slash canine control TV show. Also, you can check us out at our website, caninecontroltv.com or look us up on Facebook, Canine Control TV. Thanks a lot again for watching and don't forget to adopt. Not much, Productions.